Profit Conversations. I am your hostess, Marla Martinson, and today I have somebody coming to us from Bali. It's Jessica <laughs> Reed. Hey, Jessica! Hi, everyone. So excited to be here. I'm so excited to connect with Marla as well. I can feel that we're going to make some awesome magic today. We're going to make awesome <laughs> magic. You guys, yes. Je Jessica <laughs> is a, cl a global clairvoyant channel and purpose fulfillment coach. And she's from New Zealand, but she's residing in beautiful Bali right now. You can see the, um, it's dark here in LA and it's <laughs> daytime over there. And she's got roosters yeah. and chickens uh, crowing in the background. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Jessica shares sure. her purpose and her gifts and her message to the world through her online purposeful business. She connects with her guides and light beings, um, and she brings enlightenment and insight and information and guidance to people who maybe need some help. Uh, look, how many people are going to jobs that they hate? They're not sure about their direction. So Jessica will get information from the higher realms, from her guides, mm -hmm. and, and help you with this. So let's talk about this because I love... Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a business owner. I'm also mm -hmm. into the spiritual community, a Reiki master, crystal yeah. healer. So I love merging the two. I love that. So tell us yes. a little bit about your spiritually based business, how you got into it, and how you yeah. help other people. Sure, sure. And I just wanted to mention too, like I love the combination of the the spiritual purpose and the entrepreneurial um, journey. Like I remember when I was you know, ever since I was six years old, I'd always tell my parents, um, you know, I'm going to grow up and I'm going to have, like, I'd describe my lifestyle to them saying, you know, I was going to find what I was passionate about, you know, meaning my purpose, and I was going to have a business and I was going to, um, you know, spoil them rotten, you know, <laughs> you know, I, I've always thought of it as a way that I can, I can give to my family and to others and everything like that and, and live an abundant life, lifestyle of freedom and, and, you know, purpose all along the way and so it's been something that's kind of been in my vision and in my soul ever since I was a little kid and I've always just talked about it talked about it, talked about it and it's um, something that you know ever since I was a toddler my parents have told me that I would you know see people that they weren't seeing or you know people that weren't physically there um, talking with you know uh, my past loved ones that were no longer with us um, just not really seeing the world the same way that everyone else did, you know. Um, I didn't really kind of fit into school or society or, like, how everyone else viewed this life here. Um, I kind of struggled in that way because I just didn't get um, the way that most people were viewing life because um, I saw it in so many different dimensions. Um, and so throughout, like, high school, I kind of blocked off my gifts um, because I wanted to be like normal. <laughs> I wanted to experience what it was like to be a normal teenager that, you know, went to the parties and had boyfriends and things like that. Um, and then I moved to Australia when I was 18. Um, I had a nice materialistic lifestyle set up in terms of what, you know, you're supposed to do. You know, I had a stable job. I had a home, a dog, a relationship, a, you know, nice cars and everything like that. Um, financially stable everything like that but I wasn't fulfilled I was like something deep down was just missing I wasn't feeling myself in terms of my soul and who I was here to be um, and I feel like a lot of people feel that way too you know a lot of people can say that they can check off the list of what you're supposed to be doing here according to society um, and still not feeling fulfilled or purposeful um, and then it kind of literally overnight I had this flashback experience of a past life that kind of like catapulted me into my higher awareness. Um, and from that point forward for about two to three years, I had like all of a sudden, literally overnight, every day dealing with this overwhelm of energy. And I didn't know what it was at the time because I, I didn't um, connect with, you know, remembering energies and, and and how to process that information because I also separated it uh, separated from it as in like what I what I did naturally when I was a kid um and so for two years I thought I had just like really chronic anxiety 
because I was always overwhelmed and I always couldn't handle all this information that was kind of being processed on an energetic level. Um, and when I tap back into, you know, reading Hay House books and, and spiritual books and, and going to see clairvoyance and meditation groups and everything like that um, and practicing my intuition, I started realizing that the when I started practicing my intuition, I was turning their overwhelm and their energy into guidance and information or, you know, it, it started becoming purposeful but started seeing it as like a gift to be able to receive that energy and information and 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 um bring it through and to channel and things like that so once I realized that I was tapped back into my gifts and everything was kind of coming back with the mediumship and the psychic abilities Mm -hmm. um I just decided to basically just realize that I wasn't happy with my life and I literally left I left my job I left my home I left my relationship I left everything because it wasn't where I was meant to be. What kind of I went job home did you have at the time, Jessica? Just like an oh, just like office, an office kind of, you know, receptionist role that was yeah. had no purpose in it for me, no fulfillment. Yeah. Um, and so I went home basically to just delve into my spiritual um, journey and to start my meditation classes. And I always you were, had you people, were giving you know, like, classes or taking them? You mean start giving them? The classes? Giving them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I went home and I decided, like, this is what I'm here to do. I've been doing it ever since I was a little child, and it was just like I was remembering that. And the anxiety was like an awakening to, to like, fast track me back onto my gifts and my purpose. Um, and I always say to people that are in search of their purpose that you never really see the whole picture um, from the beginning in terms of you when you're looking for your purpose you won't often see like your whole purpose and your future projected in front of you it's often just the first next step in terms of what you're passionate about what you feel called toward and what what's the the first step that you can take so my first step was meditation classes Mm -hmm. which rolled into then doing one-on-one readings and doing um you know, uh, coaching work with people and now um, helping people to really um, find their purpose, fulfill their purpose and share it with the world. So just I like for people to know that there's no pressure to know it all right now, but you, if you go in that direction, it'll all unfold in front of you. Yeah, yeah. at least take that step because it's hard to just mm-hmm. say quit mm-hmm. your job. You know, that's mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. Like, most people can't just do that. But I think if you start mm-hmm. slowly with something you're really passionate mm-hmm. about, even if you can de- dedicate 15 minutes to it. You have mm-hmm, to start feeding mm-hmm. that creativity, yeah. right? Yeah, and when you like step into the flow of it, it's almost like you're giving um, the commitment, like you're stepping into that soul space and that purposeful space, and you're almost like signaling to the universe, I'm going to commit to this. Yes. I'm going to start. I'm going to start receiving this flow of momentum of my purpose. And then the universe starts reflecting that back to you by showing you the next step and the next step and the next step. And it all just yeah unfolds in front of you if you're in that space of allowing yourself to, to be in that flow. Yeah. And you've done something wonderful. You just lightened up and now you can go to different countries and you're in Bali till mid-October mm-hmm. or maybe longer and... And you don't mm-hmm. have all that. You're not bogged down because um, in our modern society, especially the Western world, people are all about mm-hmm. stuff and things and how, how many mm-hmm. shoes can you have or, or designer purses <laughs> or, a, you mm-hmm. know, fancier car. And instead of mm-hmm. just putting your money in the bank and, and having that freedom to get up and go, I always say it's so mm-hmm. nice to have some FU money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. It gives you that freedom <laughs> that you're not stuck something. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, and and it's awesome because when you really tap into your purpose and your gifts, and you realize that you know the internet is here for a reason. I like to think of it as the fifth dimension, in a sense of oh, yeah. you know it takes us to that whole other level where we can connect as a collective consciousness from all around the world, and we can all be free to be wherever we choose to be. Um, and you can you can work with people, you can share your purpose, share your gifts, and and be returned. Um, with the exchange of money to support your lifestyle and your abundance and, and what it is that you want to design as your life. Yeah, it's, right. it's, and it's a beautiful, I feel like it's just the natural process of where we're meant to be in this day and age. Do you feel that way as well? Absolutely, and people with the YouTube and everything, it, it you find out that people are 
uh, like-minded, you know, because it's interesting. Mm -hmm. My husband, who's very practical and everything, he's so mm -hmm. worried when I do my videos, like with my friend Karen Dahlman about the Ouija board, and we're wearing our witches hats mm -hmm. for fun, and he's like, <laughs> yeah. he's freaking out. Like, you have high-level clients. They can think you're crazy. People are not going to understand you. Mm -hmm. You could lose credibility. Yeah. And he's all afraid. He gets real upset about it. And um, I'm mm. like, you know, I thought about it. And I talk about that in my book, how I thought about that. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what? But I need to mm -hmm. be me. I'm, I'm having fun with it. Mm -hmm. People that do watch it love it. Um, it's mm -hmm. not, I'm not going to be for everyone, you know. We all have our tribe yeah. that we'll get. Yes. Um, but it is interesting how you find out, gosh, there are so many people who believe in angels or like angel communication mm -hmm. or or psychics, uh -huh. or yeah. the Ouija board, or pendulums, or candle magic, or yeah. there's witches, or yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it's mm -hmm. just it's yeah. so eclectic now, and you can kind of embrace it and not be afraid because there's all these other people because we're connected worldwide. Yeah. Yes, yeah, and I'll, I'll share you something quickly with you. It's like I always hear people saying, oh, I can't find like-minded people or I can't um, find friends that have similar interests and things like that. And I say to people, like, they're everywhere. I went to the hairdresser um, on Tuesday, and, you know, normally you wouldn't assume that you would start talking about super spiritual stuff with your hairdresser. Right. <laughs> you know, normally it's just about the weather or, you know, what makeup you like and stuff like that. Um, but we actually started talking about it. It was a guy um, – I, he asked me what I do, and I, I was willing enough to, to be vulnerable enough to say what I do. And he just was like, oh, my God, you know, that's so cool. And we started talking about his ayahuasca experiences oh, yeah. and, you know, like these quite like in-depth spiritual things yeah. that you wouldn't expect from going to the hairdresser. But if you're willing enough to put yourself out there and to talk about it and to be who you really are, then you open up that portal for other people to kind of step into it and be like, yeah, I love that too. Like <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything, but I actually love all that stuff as well. You know, it kind of like just opens that mm -hmm. up. Yeah. Or you see and someone love... wearing a crystal and you're like, ooh, I love your tourmaline or, or what a cool, yes, you know. Yeah. And then like, oh, yeah, I've got a bunch and I do this yeah. and that and, and stuff. Yeah. But I think we vibrate yeah. towards towards pe like-minded people, you know, and then if you just talk yes. about it, you find out. Yeah, yeah exactly. totally, totally. You just got to start talking about it, huh? And then, and then people will be attracted to you and start opening up as well. Yeah, and yeah. also go on and join. Uh, when you find some videos on YouTube that you like, then you can mm -hmm. uh, subscribe and then see mm -hmm. who else is commenting and you know you find mm -hmm. friends that way Can too I, and I think Facebook groups I found some really Facebook cool like-minded yeah. people in Facebook groups that's fantastic mm -hmm. yeah, yes definitely definitely <laughs> so when somebody uh, wants to do a reading or a session with you about finding their life's mm -hmm. purpose how what do you what do you do do you first tune in and give them a reading and then talk about what they want to do how, how do you how does it you know, map out. <laughs> so first what I do is I first talk to them about what it is that they are searching for. So what questions they have, what areas of their life that they want guidance upon. Um, they can be as specific as they like. You know, they can talk about, you know, um, their relationship with their mother or father or their partner and what the kind of issue is and how to really work around it or, you know, just they can be really specific in any area of their life. Um, but yeah, Nearly every single reading that I do, someone is asking, you know, what's my purpose or, or what's my direction moving forward on my highest path? And then um, I have this beautiful, huge clear quartz crystal that I um, connect with because I love crystals. Um, and I tune into their energy and I um, close my eyes and go into a meditation where I connect with my guides and ask them to, to help me access the information for my client. And I also ask for their guides to come forward to connect um, and I just practice communicating with both of our guides and asking the questions. Um, and then while I'm in that meditation, they start bringing forward uh, images and visions and messages and feelings. And it's almost like they play this little mini movie for me of, of my client's life, whether it be past, present or future, and what things they need to understand and focus on and what direction they need to go in, um, perhaps directions that they need to avoid, um, you know, d just all different things. And then, yeah, they'll give me an insight upon um, their purpose and the, the, kind of like the energy of the purpose and the people that they can be helping and how. Um, and helping them highlight what they've experienced in their life and what they've learned on, learnt from, you know, especially from their challenges, as to how they can use that to enlighten others. Mm -hmm. um, and so I collect all that information. It's like a download. And then I come back and share it all with my client um, and record the session so that they can listen to it again. 
Um, and then if they feel that they're ready to really step into their purpose and fulfill it and share it with the world, we then go into either an intensive or a 90-day empowered purpose leaping mentorship where I work with both of our guides to help guide them along the path step by step over 90 days and I utilize my experience of you know entrepreneurial um, experience as to how they can really get themselves out there in this modern day world with the internet and you know social media and a website and everything like that um, and I just like to yeah it's like my passion to help people take that leap and to put themselves out there and to see how it can really um, support them as well. Yeah, and I just, I love it. I love seeing people, you know, just really stepping into their purpose. It's beautiful. And it's interesting. Well, wouldn't you say that we all kind of know uh, mm -hmm. that knowing of what we really like? Or is it like, for instance, so if somebody like me came to you, so I have so many things. I've got my matchmaking. I'm a mm -hmm. Reiki master mm -hmm. crystal healer. I write books. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. um, have the YouTube show, and then sometimes I'm mm -hmm. too scattered. Like my husband says, you do too many things, and I'm, <laughs> but I make my money. I make my real money matchmaking, but I mm -hmm. love the other stuff. So maybe mm -hmm. the guides would say, well, Marla, really, you've been matchmaking mm -hmm. 15 years. Now you can serve more people if you start doing more Reiki or combine it, or they'll kind of tell you. Mm -hmm. They can probably see which way, because mm -hmm. if you're scattered mm -hmm. like me, yeah. Then they yeah. would just quickly they, say, okay, this is more important right now. Yeah, they show what direction is more important and how you can bring together a unique combination of what you um, have skills for and what you have gifts with and, and how it can really be enlightening and something that has a point of difference in terms of not just being you know, the same as what everyone else is doing in that field, you know, actually yeah. bringing forward something fresh, something unique, something that's totally you so that you can feel completely in your light, you know, yeah. so that you can feel enlightened within what you're doing and bring forward the best version of yourself. Um, so, you know, and also they always say you can be multi-purpose, you know, <laughs> yeah. you can be multi-purposeful, you can have two or three different avenues if that's manageable for you, mm -hmm. but they will just show you where kind of, which direction um, fulfills more purpose and what things can be combined to create something unique. Yeah, yeah. that is so important because you do, you, you do want to stand out in your field. There's so many people mm -hmm. now doing the same things and you want to be different mm -hmm. and to, to mm -hmm. have that edge. You need mm -hmm, to, mm -hmm. to be creative and but be yourself. You don't want to be copying anyone to yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And they'll show also, you know, um, different platforms and ways that you can serve in terms of some people they'll show to me that they need to be working one on one with clients in, in a premium kind of um, manner. Or some people need to be really broadcasting themselves and their message and their gifts across, you know, masses of, of audiences. So there's different platforms for that. Yeah. You know, they kind of like show where they can best fulfill purpose and where it has the strongest um, positive benefit and positive impact. And then so the it's, it's follows, different for everyone. Right, because, the, because I know people will say, well, they'll want to write a book and then see, I've written five books, but I'm still not, I don't mm. make a living on the books. So, um, mm. but, but, and people will write a write a book and say, well, how, you know, how successful, I want to be a bestseller, I want it to make a million dollars, but that's not mm -hmm. the reason to write the book, you want to write the book because it's in you mm -hmm. and you want to share it, you. right, so, mm -hmm. so you do yeah. that, and instead, mm -hmm. it's kind of, because it's kind of backwards going, say, how much money am I going to make, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, yeah, you yeah, got to yeah. share your gifts first, and then the right people mm -hmm. will come for it, right. Definitely, definitely, and it, and it all comes around and it's divine timing as well. Yes. You know, my guides are always reminding me of that because, I, you know, like everyone, I always get into that place where I'm like, I can see myself here and I want to be there now, you know, and it's it's always like them reminding me when I go into my meditation or when I go into channeling, they're just like, trust in the natural divine process and timing. We've got this, you know, like it, they're, they're always confirming to me. It's already in its place. Everything's yes. already you know, etherically or vibrationally lined up. It's it's like they're showing, like, it's guaranteed, but you just can't expect to have it what the way that your mind wants it to be. You know, yeah. it has divine timing. Humans and it has want everything now. Capacity. Now that we can get the TV on like that, we can get yeah. do everything <laughs> right. You know, when I was a mm. kid, we had to actually stand up and go yeah. turn the channel. <laughs> Yeah. Now nobody dream of yeah. getting up off the couch to go turn the channel. So it's like we want yeah. instant. So we yes. enjoy the process, right? 
Mm, mm-hmm, definitely, definitely. And the more they remind me of that, the more I realize like how enjoyable the process is, you know, mm-hmm. um, just the, it's, it's like, um, say for instance, if you, if, if you're wanting to be on like a huge platform, you know, um, having millions of listeners and things like that, it's when you get on those podcasts or, you know, platforms where you've got 10,000 listeners and it's like, yay like it's exciting it's like that's part of the journey right. it's, it's not a million yet but it's the ten thousand that's you know leading you in that direction and you have to celebrate each little kind I of i made a contest uh, when i got step. 500 subscribers you know yes, so yes. i made a sub- yeah yes. like whoa <laughs> yay yeah, yes a hundred percent a hundred percent it's like you have to celebrate each step otherwise you kind of you'll kind of feel like you've never gotten to that point because it's always going to be expanding yeah um and a lot a lot of people will um, talk to me about that is that they always feel like their purpose is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, like it's expanding, 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 expanding. Like you might have a vision in the first place as to what you want to achieve, mm-hmm. but you never kind of like get there and go, okay, I'm done. Like mm-hmm. it's always like you get there and you, you're, you've already got a new vision for how it's moving forward. So you have to enjoy every part, otherwise you'll always be searching for something that's never going to end in a way. Yeah, yes, exactly. You're looking for the future. You're not, that's the living in the now, you know, that we mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I want to talk to you a little bit about channeling because that's one of my favorite subjects. And I, I yeah. uh, tomorrow night, my friends uh, Linda Salvin and Karen uh, Dahlman were going to see this uh, new film called First Contact, which is a documentary about Daryl Lanka who channels Bashar. And uh, he, yeah. have you heard of Bashar? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah so mm-hmm. that's going to be so much fun. And I, I try to interview a lot of channelers, and and I've been mm-hmm. started channeling myself. And what do you think about this? Because uh, it seems like now there's so many channelers, so many people are channeling. Yeah. What's, what's going yeah. on? Yeah. <laughs> how is this, you know, how is yeah. this happening? And, and it's exciting. Mm-hmm. And, and some people yeah. don't believe it's real or, or what, you know. Mm-hmm. And on YouTube, mm-hmm. you'll see this person's channeling Mother Mary. This one's channeling an extraterrestrial. This one's channeling. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so yeah. what's your take Everywhere. on all this channeling? <laughs> Yeah, and I, I'm I'm so excited about it too because it's like it's showing that we're all ascending. It's showing that we're all becoming these light beings with really kind of like connected and open crown chakras. Um, and you know, like I was saying earlier, you know, the throat chakra and everything like that, just bringing it all through. Um, but it's also you can see like say with um, the internet and social media and the YouTube channels and everything like that. Because there's all these other people that are coming out and you know coming kind of coming out of the closet and, and channeling online and things like that, it, it then starting like a ripple effect of like, oh, maybe I could start channeling online because it's a bit more acceptable these days or, you know, it's, it's quite popular these days. And um, I think also a lot of people are realizing that channeling isn't that hard. Like I think it was kind of in, in a, a later time or, you know, previously, it was almost like channeling was this um, super, um, I guess like supernatural, like crazy thing to do as if like someone else was taking over your body or something you know but now people have an understanding that that it's just purely tapping into the essence of source energy or your guides or the angels Mm -hmm. and allowing their energy and their intention and their information to flow through you and it's really easy like it's it's really supernatural when you when you start doing it when you start practicing it you just feel that energetic flow so i think a lot of people are yeah First of all, um, ascending, becoming um, higher light beings, realizing that it's more acceptable and, you know, appreciated in this world nowadays. Um, and a lot of people are just realizing that it's, it's, it's not that hard. You can tune in and, and channel um, and, and that there's so many energies out there, whether it be angels, and light beings, you know, um, extraterrestrials, Pleiadians, guides, you know, they're all willing, they're more than willing to bring through and like infuse this collective consciousness with their information. So it's like this beautiful movement that everyone's um, really getting on board with. So I love it. I know it. And and there's people who are real professionals that that are, you know, they're not some woo-woo out there Mm -hmm. nutcakes or something, you know, they're they're, they're like regular people. And then they're bringing yes. forth all this amazing information. And for me, mm-hmm. I started opening up more once I was getting these the Reiki attunements and the energetic attunements mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. stuff. That's when it started happening yeah. for me. So I know I'll, I'll get better at it, but I am bringing through. Uh, I'm very good on the talking board, but I, I'm getting off the board now, and, and it's yeah. been fun. And, and that energy mm-hmm. you feel around the crown all the time. Now, mm-hmm. what um, would – so people – 
who aren't like as excited about all this as us, uh, they mm-hmm. always they mm-hmm. often will bring up, yeah, but how do you know it's not a demon coming in? And and the devil mm-hmm. pretends to be pretends to be an angel or pretends to be nice, mm-hmm. but an angel would never come through. That would never happen. Only mm-hmm. demons. I hear that a lot. So yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. Do you hear that? I, a lot too? I don't hear it personally. Um, in terms of the people that um they are kind of asking me about my channeling and things like that but I do have a huge awareness that a lot of people believe that and I would first of all like I wouldn't try to defend it or try to explain it I would say where is that belief coming from Mm -hmm. where what has told you that it can only be a negative thing Mm -hmm. and no offense but it does come from a lot of religions that don't they'll often say well the bible yeah yeah, yeah, and and it's and it's all coming from a fear-based place, mm-hmm. you know. And it, and I would ask people to just kind of be more observant of where that's coming from and the fear that's behind it than the actual thing that they're trying to question. If you know what I mean, yeah. like. And the thing is also, you can feel it when you. Um, and I was going to say, you know, for people, um, because there are so many channels out there, and some are really genuine and. Um, high vibration and some are not um you know it's all about some uh, construction work next door so she moved inside (laughs) so uh hello (laughs) we're we're talking (laughs) about the negative uh people who think of maybe only negative aspects to channeling but i've only Mm -hmm. had really great uh powerful wonderful messages come through and it has been Mm -hmm. so much fun it's made my life sparkle Mm -hmm. it's made it interesting i've given some people some readings and messages which has been fun yes yeah definitely definitely and it is just questioning where that fear comes from or where that belief comes from um and really understanding that if you tune into the channeling and you feel the channeling you can feel the energy coming through and you know that it's real and that it's coming from a positive space and Every time that I listen to channeling, it's always such a loving message. Yeah. So it's just so opposite to anything evil or devil or anything like that, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we've got a lot of uh, noise from the from the construction, so we're going to end it here, you guys. But I'm going to have Jessica back, and uh, maybe we'll even get some viewer questions. So put your questions mm-hmm. below. And anything yeah. you want to find out uh, from Jessica, we will ask her in the next video. And... Mm-hmm. Blessings, everybody. Give channel. Thank you so much. If you've channeled, let me know too, because I want to hear about your experience.